All right, welcome back. Let's take a look at this homing missile challenge and get this guy firing these homing missiles. So first thing you're asked to do is go to the player and in their create method, we want to give them a global variable called target. So global target equals, and it says to set it to negative four. Remember in the instance ID world for game maker, negative four means basically no uh, no instance, right? Nothing. So that part's done. Now it says when the player hits the T key, so let's go to key press T, we want to randomly select a enemy and assign its ID to that target variable. So here we go. We find out how many. So the num is instance number of enemy. If the number is zero, I'm just going to get out of here. And then the next part is to pick a good number now that I know how many there are on there. So let's uh, just get some random number R. I random range. I want a number from zero to num minus one. Right? So that way, if there's five enemies, I'm picking from zero to four, which is the appropriate numbering or ordering of these enemies uh, in Game Maker World. Now I want to grab the ID of that monster. I'll just call it MID. And I use my little method, instance find. And I'm going to say, hey, out of those enemies, find me number R. And it sends me back the ID of that enemy. Now, that ID that I just got back that's what I want to set my target to. So I could write this here. Target is MID. Or to be a bit more efficient, I may as well just do this. Right here where it says MID. Just go straight there and skip this line altogether. And so that's pretty well it. Right? I found out how many. I picked an appropriate number. And I grabbed the ID of that monster. And it's now stored here. Whoops. Global dot target. Perfect. Almost a mistake there. And now that's remembering which monster I have selected. So let me close that down. The next part was to give the missile a variable called target. Now this is important because once I fire this missile, I want this missile to have the knowledge that it needs to have so that it can follow that enemy until it hits that enemy. And so if the missile is supposed to be the thing that actually has knowledge of the global variable target, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to give the missile its own variable. And remember, this is now an instance variable. And I'm just going to call it target. Now, this is different than global target, right? Global target belongs to the game. Target belongs inside of each missile. That way what I can do is as I fire missiles, I can change my target. Every missile will remember its own target, which is sort of like what a missile does. So there's that target variable for the missile. Now let's take care of uh, the actual firing of the missile. This is back to the player again, and this is a space bar. So key press, space bar. I am supposed to fire a missile, make it move away, <coughs> excuse me, and set its target so it knows where it's going. So here we go. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check to see if the global target variable is actually representing an enemy that is on the screen. So here we go. If instance exists in the room, global.target. Remember, the player created this variable called global target. It's keeping track of an ID. Maybe it's negative four still. Maybe it's a monster that exists in the room. Sorry, an enemy that's in the room. Maybe it's an enemy that has now been destroyed. So it's not in the room anymore. So we have to do this check to make sure that this variable is still keeping an ID that actually represents a monster in the room. So if the instance exists, is false, I just get out of here. So I just leave. There'll be no firing today. 
Okay, otherwise, it's going to keep going down here, run the code. I want to make a missile. I'll call it MM, and I'll instance create x comma y make a missile I'll give some speed the direction is supposed to be up and now here's the last part I want to tell this missile to remember its target and its target is going to be whatever global target currently is so all I have to do here is I can say mm dot and I gave every missile a variable inside it called target. Remember that's right here. When I made the missile in create, every missile now has a target variable. So that's perfect for this player firing here. Is I can say mm set your target to global dot target. So if the target right now is a million and three, then the missile's target ends up equaling a million and three. And that's just going to stay a million and three until the missile decides to destroy itself or until it hits that monster slash enemy. So that's really it for the making the, uh, the missile. Now what I'll do is we got to go back to the missile where it says in the step event, we want the missile to constantly move towards its target. So perfect for the step event. All I'll put here is I'm just going to basically do a couple checks. Make sure the missile's target still exists. So another one of these instance exists command. All we can check here is, remember we're coding in the missile. The missile has a target variable. If the missile's instance does not exist in the room anymore. We're actually supposed to try and find another, which I'll code in a bit. Otherwise, I'm supposed to head towards that enemy. Now I'll leave this part just for in a minute from now. Let me do the, uh, the alternative part to this was as long as my target does exist in the room, what I want to do is move towards it. So I'm going to set the direction of the missile to be point direction, x comma y, that's the missile's x, y, to the target's x, y. So target x, target y. I want the image angle to be equal to whatever direction I just found. Uh, the speed is just going to stay the same, so that's good. And really, that's that part. Now, let me go back up to this part here. If my target no longer exists, so situations. Maybe another missile has destroyed my target. So I was a little bit behind, right? And now I don't have a target that exists anymore. Try and find another target. So let me do that little routine right in here. So I'm going to try to find the nearest enemy to me if it exists. So I'm going to ask a little question. I'm going to see if there's any monsters that exist in the room at all. So I'm going to say if instance exists O enemy is true. So if there are enemies in the room, and remember, you don't just put instance IDs in here. You can put an object name like O enemy and it just checks any enemies at all. If it is true, then I'm going to set my target equal to one of the nearest one, which is instance nearest O, whoops, to my XY O enemy. Now I know there's an enemy that's nearest to me somewhere because I know there's an instance of enemy that exists. So that'll work fine. And you know what? Once I have that, I just exit out of here. Now, I'm going to do a little else, and the else is matched with that if right there. So if an enemy existed in the room, my target's now the nearest one. Otherwise, there's no enemy in the room. I do a little instance destroy, and I should do a little 
explosion here. And we'll see it blow up. Now I have that if. I have that else. I need to just end that one there. And I can do that. So if the instance exists, has become false, I do all this code here. Find another, or I blow up. Else. Else, I find the direction towards my target, and I go that way. Okay, so that's sort of a beefy chunk of code there. It does a great little task. Okay, we could actually clean this up. I could actually take that out and that out if I just add a exit command there. There, I've sort of taken care of all the options, I think. And there you go. That's the homing missile. Now, this should be good enough to test out. Let's give it a quick test, see that this actually works. Um, I think I've covered those steps there. I haven't done the blow up when it hits, but you can see here I hit space. The global target variable is currently negative 4 because I haven't hit T yet. As soon as I hit T, I selected one of them. I don't know which one it is. It's random, but I'm going to hit the space bar. And off it goes. So that's the one it went towards. And right now I just have them so they hit that enemy and, you know, there's no blowing up. But I'll fix that in a sec. If I hit T again, hit T again. You can see that my missiles, as I'm hitting T randomly, they've randomly selected an enemy. And they just continue on with the knowledge, right? Because they have their target variable set. So pretty good. Let's get the destroy of the enemy in there. So it said in the step event, it said to add a little bit of a check, find the distance, right, to the enemy. Now, the nice thing is, is if we're at this point here, we know we have a target. So I can just ask a little distance, right? I can say, let's say, dis is point direction, whoops, point distance from my x, y to my target's x and my target's y. And I'm going to ask if that distance is less than, and I'm trying to see here, I was put if it's less than 40 or 30. I have to, with other, instance destroy. With myself, instance destroy. And I may as well make an explosion too. And I'll do the explosion one for this one. And that's it. That's the check for contact to see if we're actually hitting our target or getting close to it. So let's see this work now. With the addition of destroying the enemy here, what you should be getting is you should see missiles that are heading towards a target, and then that target's destroyed. It's going to end up running this code. Their target will now be false, and it's going to pick another target nearest, or it's just going to self-destruct if there's no more enemies. All right, cross your fingers, and let's see, and that'll be the end of that challenge, if it works. Yeah, and you can see here how the missiles... Oh, why didn't it destroy the enemy? Here, let's go here. I know why it didn't destroy the enemy. I made a mistake. There's no actual collision taking place here, so this distance less than 30, that's okay. But I don't say with other. There is no other because I haven't actually done a collision event. What I need to say here is with target, instance destroy. That'll destroy the target, right, that I'm going for. Now this one should work a little better. But good little lesson there. Don't make that same mistake. So target, and you'll see it. Yeah, they go for the nearest one. I know it looks sort of weird, but, and you can see with the last one, it just self-destructed all of them because they couldn't find a nearest enemy. So they just blow themselves up. So that's not bad. That's pretty well the solution to this. Um, 
Hopefully that wasn't too hard for you, but it shows you how you can put all these pieces together with instance IDs to do uh, some good steps. And that it's not always two liners or three liners. You know, sometimes you have to think of all the possibilities. That's why I love this little chunk of code right there. Right? Shows you've thought through all the possibilities when working with these IDs. Thanks for watching. Uh, the next video, the little bonus one, was cycling through the enemies. Uh, see if you can do that one. That one's uh, semi-tricky, uh, but there'll be a video showing you how to do that.